Thanks, Michael. G'day, Moodlers. Uh, thanks for swinging by. Going to share with you a few ideas, as Michael said, about helping to improve learner engagement and motivation in your online courses. Uh, don't panic, we're not going to turn your Moodle course into a game, it's nothing that sinister, uh, but rather we're going to borrow some principles from gaming and uh, perhaps see what the end result might bring us. So research group, just pardon me, research group Gartner predicted that by 2015, around 50% of organisations that manage innovative processes will gamify those processes. Okay, so that time has come and gone, uh, and their predictions, in fact, did come to a reality. Gaming's very much ubiquitous these days. It's, it's everywhere. It uh, permeates not only life and business, but it's finding its way into education as well. It's influencing human behaviour. So I guess to illustrate that, perhaps a quick show of hands, um, Think perhaps if you're a member of a loyalty rewards program, stick your hand up so that could be, you know, Virgin Velocity, let's say, or it could be Qantas Frequent Flyer, flybys. If you own a credit card or a department store card and, you know, you rack up points and then you can trade those in. Um, it looked as though I'd say three quarters of hands went up, thank you. So, um, you know, I guess that in itself would say that we've been gamified. Um, by business, it's not a bad thing, but uh, it's just a matter of fact. So look, to illustrate that point a little further uh, and to share with you some context, um, I'll tell you a bit about my journey to be here at the Moot. Like a lot of you, perhaps uh, you came from interstate, I had to jump on a plane from sunny Queensland and uh, you know, my preferred carrier is Virgin. I'm, I'm a member, proud member of their Velocity Rewards Program. So the, the game is very simple. Uh, you, know, you, you fly with them, you earn points every time you fly, achieve a higher status. Um, earned benefits, things like free lounge access, priority baggage, check-in, uh, even seating at the front of the, the plane. So um, that's, that's the name of their game. Um, current status, uh, I'm a gold member. Uh, I've sort of been elevated from silver, so I was quite chuffed with that when I sort of got the, uh, the, the email notification. Uh, now I'm aiming for higher things, you know, I sort of want to uh, try and get to platinum. Apparently the benefits are better still, so I'm, I'm motivated. Uh, and rewarded, and I guess uh, Velocity and Virgin have sort of tapped into that idea of influencing, uh, you know, consumer and human behaviour. Okay, uh, you may or may not be able to see my points balance is around about half, a, half a uh, half a million points. Uh, Richard Branson assures me that will earn me a return uh, trip to the moon. So we'll see how we go. I think it's time for me to cash in some of these points. So you get your, you know, you get your plane ticket. Uh, optionally, you could hire a car if need be. Okay, so you can even earn more points. Uh, alternatively, you could redeem points that you've amassed already, and uh, you know, instead of spending money, use your points to hire that car. Uh, you may have noticed billboards, you know, on the motorways and around town. Much the same thing. Again, you don't have to spend money if you if you're playing their game. Uh, you know, you can fill up your, your, you know, your, your hire car or your vehicle uh, and earn points. And down the track, those points can be redeemed for prizes and, and things. So picture this. You know, I've uh, checked in at the airport, uh, straight through the security gates, uh, on the way to the lounge, as you do when you're a proud gold member. And uh, I just out of the corner, I noticed... Uh, McDonald's is running a promotion. I saw them uh, in the food court there, and I've got no interest in hamburgers, but uh, their ad caught my eye. Um, you know, they're, they're playing this Monopoly game, so you can win instantly. You download the app, and uh, the odds are pretty good of winning one in five. You could find out more. Um, I'm not quite sure with the slogan, the eat, learn, and play, but, um, and you know, what's the connection between eating and playing and learning? But uh, perhaps McDonald's is onto something. Gamification in action. Another quick show of hands, and th this is changing gears now. We'll get to Moodle very soon. Uh, who's used uh, or who's played Pokemon Go? Okay, it's around about 50% of us. Uh, look, for the uninitiated, it's a global phenomenon, or it has been, uh, around about three quarters of a billion downloads in the past 12 months or so. Uh, Apple says it, it was its most downloaded app for 2016. 
uh, generating in the well, for, for the makers of the, the app in the vicinity of $1.2 billion. So it's a pretty big deal. Uh, when it was released, the app was released initially, it crashed servers uh, and, and very much brought the internet to its knees. Again, what is it if you haven't used it? And, and we've sort of got three screen or mobile screenshots uh, side by side there. It's not a, not a single capture. Uh, it's a mobile app. It uses what's known as augmented reality. And the aim of the game is very simple. You catch all the creatures. All right? it's, it's location based, meaning well, specific creatures are situated in specific locations. And if you want to be good at the game, it, it, it pays to, uh, to move around. Uh, in the Netherlands, authorities at The Hague, uh, they took the game developers, Niantic, to court uh, to ban these small virtual creatures. Uh, gamers have been uh, frequenting this poker stop. Uh, it's pretty much a landmark that's mapped by the game, and the gamers were, were congregating in this small coastal town in the Netherlands. Uh, locals were complaining that the gamers were damaging these protected sand dunes. So it found its way, uh, I guess, into, into the courts. In Tanzania, uh, I was there very recently. Um, well, I spotted a bunch of creatures as well in the wild. These, these weren't the virtual type, though. They were real ones. And, and as you do when you're travelling to uh, a place like Tanzania, you make the mandatory visit to a Maasai village. Um, they're the best known of about 100 uh, indigenous tribes in the area. And I didn't know that. I thought they were one of a kind. So I'd say kudos to uh, their marketing department. So it was hot, it was dry, it was dusty, imagine this. Uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, and I pull out my mobile phone, I'm, I'm uh, speaking with this chap, and we start playing uh, Pokemon Go. So he was engaged, he was engrossed, he was in the moment, we are having a hell of a time. Uh, he got distracted when my wife came, uh, came to. Uh, he actually offered to trade me his 100 cows uh, for my beautiful wife. Uh, uh, well, he said, actually, the, the, the going rate was 10 goats. So, uh, you know, he was being overly generous. Uh, and as you could imagine, uh, I politely declined. Uh, I said, no deal. Uh, but it did get me thinking. I thought, well, had I been gamified by, you know, the, the head of sales? OK, so what are your thoughts for what you see now with, with the app, if you're uninitiated, and for those, perhaps half of us who have used it, uh, what makes uh, an app like this, a game, so successful? Any thoughts? You can shout them out. Things reminders on your phone all the time. You haven't played it for a while. Yeah, reminders, notifications. Yes. It's addictive. It's addictive. Okay, it's a very good point. Everybody else is doing it, so it's sort of it's in vogue. It's it's trendy. Yep. Play on nostalgia. It plays on nostalgia. Good one. Any others? Reputation, and, and it's competitive, absolutely. Gratification. Gratification, thank you very much. So a lot of people think the answers to life and happiness is in that uh, handheld distraction device. It's quite curious. Uh, and that's it, I agree completely with everything you said there. A few other thoughts that come to mind. Uh, why is it so successful? It's engaging, it's fun, it's motivating its users, and it rewards them, okay? Even if in a tokenistic uh, virtual digital sense, okay? Say it again. It's easy, as in easy to use. It's intuitive. Yeah, this is true. So you, you know, you, you download the app. It's on your phone. You launch it, and away you go. And you take it with you. So that notion of mobility. Okay, let's let's change it up now. Uh, we're getting to Moodle very soon, I promise. Uh, what if our students felt the same way uh, about their learning, perhaps as they do about apps such as Pokemon Go? How might that impact education? Well, there's a problem. Uh, we know ideally that uh, training should engage the learner, but the reality is oftentimes different. Learning experiences may be mandatory, too easy or too difficult, boring, unrewarding, or irrelevant to the learner at that point in time. So, in fact, there may be a disconnect between the ideals of online education and the actual learner experience. So is there a way in which we can make learning fun, rewarding, uh, motivating, and all those things that uh, we mentioned there just before? Perhaps a solution lies in gamification. So just quickly, by definition, it's the act of the, or gamification is the act or the art of applying game-based principles to improve 
non-game things. So that it could include, as we illustrated before, business, life, and so too education. Uh, here's a quick rundown, and again, it's by no means an exhaustive list of uh, game or gaming principles, but you know, if you did a quick scan of the, the relevant literature, there are some common, uh, you know, some common tenets that do come up, um, and perhaps we can borrow some of these principles to enhance learning as online educators. So I'll run through a couple of them very quickly, and we'll see them then in the context of Moodle and, and how that relates to you. So the notion of flow um, in a game, if you've ever played a game, um, you know, it's that notion of being not too bored, not too challenged. You're kind of in that Goldilocks zone or that sweet spot um, where you're really focused on the task at hand. So we've got to really get our uh, educators in that sweet spot as well. The idea of resilience is uh, being able to build um, a positive uh, or a balance of positive and negative emotions, not just in gamers, but in our learners. So they can't always be winners. Uh, they need to sometimes uh, bounce back from a loss. Uh, with respect to progression, it's all about uh, you know, this, this idea of a continual sense of progression. Games are very good at it, where you level up. You, know, you acquire a skill or you achieve something, you reward it, and then you go to the next level or the bonus round. So we ought to do that in uh, our online education as well. Uh, oftentimes, we as educators are good motivators. Can we use extrinsic or external motivation to build intrinsic or internal motiva motivation within our learners? Uh, I'll leave the last two. Uh, you can see those, and, and hopefully they're fairly self-explanatory. We'll see them uh, in action in a minute within Moodle. So perhaps here's a formula, uh, three steps. We've just identified some potential gaming principles that we could borrow from. Let's apply them to learning design within our Moodle courses. And then we as the educators, we can, we can facilitate the learning experience. OK, the good news is this. And I'll give this is the seven, I guess, easy ways or tips or, or ideas to consider. Uh, with Moodle, there's a bunch of inbuilt features there at your disposal that support or promote or foster gamification. And you may, in fact, be using them already. So some of what I'll share with you here could be just reaffirmation that you, you're having a go, you're trying to engage and motivate your learners, and that's excellent. So avatars is a big thing. It's your persona. Uh, it's your online identity. Uh, in many games, it's the first thing you need to consider. You choose your character and perhaps an outfit, um, a hairdo, a weapon of choice, those kind of things. So it's how the gamer, or in our context, it's how the learner relates to their experience in an online environment. You can see here, uh, you would go to your profile page within Moodle, uh, upload a picture of yourself via your user profile. You know, it could be a selfie. Perhaps uh, some people are more comfortable uploading a picture of their pet or their favourite sporting team, whatever, whatever is appropriate. Not just for us, I think it's also important our students or our users, our, uh, our learners are doing this. Uh, the idea is it will help personalise the learning and promote uh, a sense of ownership in that experience. And let's face it, uh, you know, we're starting to blend our learning. We're, we're, we're not all 100% uh, traditional face-to-face -face educators anymore. There could be an online component. So that's where uh, the avatar comes into its own. Groups. Groups promote this sense of belonging, belonging to a team, and oftentimes that motivates our learners. Uh, you can see a group is a course-centric concept. You could go in if you've got uh, you know, a bunch of students, you could manually add them to uh, respective groups. Uh, they could be randomly allocated. Uh, you could apply, uh, I guess, clusters of groups or groupings. And then outside a course in a category or a site-wide context, there's things uh, that you may be familiar with, such as cohorts. The same applies. You, know, you can put people into teams in different contexts within your Moodle. Uh, and also apply an avatar, an image to that group or grouping or cohort. And you know, wherever uh, those learners uh, go across the system, and wherever they contribute uh, learning artifacts, that image will, uh, will be there, you know, like the brand or the badge for that particular team. Activity tracking. That reinforces the notion of, or the gaming principle of progression, and, and I reckon flow as well, the whole idea of you complete an activity according to 
uh, a criteria or a set of conditions. Uh, you earn a tick, you move forward onto the next. So games are very good at promoting that sense of flow and progression, and we can do much the same in our Moodle courses. Conditional access. So it's all about rules and access. So the learner must follow the defined rules, the rules that we define as educators, and they gain access or they unlock new learning material in the course. So in this example here, uh, you know, it's a case of the, the learner first needing to read perhaps a, a, a web page resource, and having done that, it will unlock the discussion forum where they can introduce themselves. We'd be familiar with quizzes. Uh, there's also a, a quiz results block. It's not, uh, it's not there typically by default, but you can add that. Uh, it's very trivial. Uh, that will you know, give you, as you see there, a leaderboard sort of situation in your course. And it does introduce a competitive element. And the idea there, I guess the gaming principle that would tap into is resilience. Again, we can't all be winners. Sometimes we've got to accept that we're losers. I, I guess if you were Brenda, in this situation, uh, on that particular leaderboard, you know, you'd be feeling pretty good about yourself. Uh, Gary, by comparison, uh, he may be feeling uh, that, you know, he's got to uh, lift his game. Course completion status. Uh, this ties in very nicely with activity tracking and that sense of progression and flow and goal setting. So, um, you know, once we've enabled activity tracking and we've got a learning sequence, uh, you would add the course completion status block and configure that. It's, it's quite a quick and easy thing to do. So the idea there would be the learner has a clear indication of where they are uh, in a course and what they need to do to complete the course. So they're no longer in learning limbo, I would call it. Before activity tracking and course, com course completion uh, tracking came along, that, that was oftentimes the case in Moodle. Teachers and learners really didn't know uh, who was where um, and where the finish line was at. <coughs> and lastly, badges. So uh, for the uninitiated, a badge is like a digital reward. Uh, in this case, it's kind of the little avatar you can see there. So you can earn badges for completing things like activities in a course or completing a course or even simple things like updating your user profile. So administrators, teachers can um, enable and configure these things. It's all about, I guess, badges is about sta uh, status, power and rewards. And again, these things are very motivating to learners oftentimes. So the idea here being uh, we can, or the learners, you know, attain the badges and they can display them in various, various places. So the user profiles, typically, uh, in this case, they can display them on what's known as the Mozilla uh, backpack. They're our friends that, that, that brought us the Firefox browser. Okay, uh, not much involved to configure your Moodle site if you're an administrator and have it connect and push badges to the backpack. And then from there, uh, users can show off their badges on third party sites and services like Facebook, LinkedIn and elsewhere. Okay, naturally, it's, uh, what's the big deal with a badge? Well, it's all about uh, showing evidence that uh, you've acquired skills and knowledge in, in a digital sense, potentially. Okay, um, it could help the learners uh, land a job, earn a promotion, and of course show off to their peers. Okay, just quickly then, so that was all sort of, I guess, the core inbuilt features within Moodle and, and some of them, just really the tip of the iceberg. Uh, a couple things in closure um, that might, might be of interest to you. Uh, a few plugins, so these are third party. Um, you know, they're not maintained or managed by HQ. And I suppose the caveat would be use them at your peril and they're not necessarily compatible with your version of Moodle. So give it due diligence. Progress bar is, uh, is much loved. Uh, it's a block there. Uh, it hooks in very nicely with activity tracking. Uh, it's perhaps uh, more visual than what you would see otherwise. So, you know, you've got the colour coding there indicating what has or hasn't been completed and, and the status for the, for the end user. So, you know, that promotes this notion of progression and flow. Leveling up, so very simply, uh, we gain experience points and we level up uh, within a course. So, you know, we attach these uh, points to activities. So, you know, you complete the activity and you earn points. Uh, so that should be motivating. Uh, it's all about power, access and rewarding our learners. So that's kind of what a typical configuration page would look like for, for power up. Uh, you can see there, you know, uh, you earn 
15 experience points when a condition or conditions are true. So introduce yourself in a discussion forum and you know you post. And then for uh, for you know not just the, the teacher but the learner potentially, again another ladder or leaderboard. So you, again it's this this idea of status and resilience. Okay, uh, stash. Now if you've been on uh, Adrian's presentation here yesterday, it was a goodie. Um, this is all about uh, completing an activity and earning, uh, you know, digital or virtual objects. So they could be whatever you, whatever you want. Um, I mean, examples typically things like coins, crowns, swords. Um, if you've got a more adult audience, um, you might have to use your creativity a bit more. But the aim of the game is you accumulate um, or stash a defined number of objects, and that unlocks access to future learning in the course. Okay, that's the, the short of the long. Um, again, it's all about access, power and reward for the learners, key gaming principles. So this is kind of the configuration page for the, for the educator. So the user requires a defined object in their stash or objects, and then that unlocks or gives them access to a given activity. Okay. And then a report might look something like this. Is anyone here using stash out of curiosity? Yeah, wait a, oh, of course you are. Yeah, and I've got your email as well, so we can talk later. Thank you. Okay, this is an oldie but a goodie. I see badges the 21st century equivalent of this, a certificate, but this is, this is, this is uh, quite okay as well. Um, you know, it's all about power and status and rewarding our learners when they achieve um, a desired outcome from, from our training and from their learning. Okay, so... Um, this is this is quite a tidy plug-in. Okay, wrapping things up. Um, I think it's important we swim between the flags. There's there's at least a few red flags I came across. So I, I sort of did um, a little bit of a meta-analysis meta of of some gamification studies. You know, it's a real buzz phrase in the education space. We know at the minute. Um, and look, from what I understand uh, in the context of education, some of the research indicates that gamification is a good thing and it may improve engagement and motivation. Engagement and motivation, let me say that again. However, there's no clear evidence, no clear link that this results to better learning outcomes. So I hate to disappoint you, but that's what I, uh, that's what I saw in the, in the meta-analyses. So uh, my thought would be this, if your online learners aren't fully engaged, in the learning experience. At the very least, gamification may be worth a go. So simple formula, as we said before, apply the gaming principles, facilitate the learning, and perhaps observe the outcomes. And importantly, report back to the Moodle community because we'd be all really interested to see how it gets along. So uh, a quick bit of food for thought. Uh, Confucius, he was a great uh, Chinese thinker, social philosopher back in about 500 BC. He said, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, let me do and I understand. And I reckon he was on the right track. You know, this whole idea that engagement is king or queen. And what he was saying, I thought, um, learners need to be active, not passive participants in their education. So to that end, uh, what Confucius was saying is a pretty good fit for the idea of gamification. That is about it. I'm mindful of time and... Yep. Uh Interesting stuff. Thank you, Chad.